The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to create your first document inside of Microsoft Word. You'll notice here that on this screen we're currently looking at a blank document and it occupies most of the window that we're looking at. If you look above the document, above this area, and you look up here, this whole area is actually referred to as a ribbon. The ribbon is broken into three components. The first part are these, which are referred to as tabs. For each tab, you'll notice that they each have, some of them have icons, some of them only have words. Each of these are referred to as commands. The latter part is each of the tabs breaks down each of the sections into groups. The groups are visible because you see that they are called the labels and in this case this group is labeled as table of contents this one as footnotes. If I were to click on the home tab I notice that if I want to focus on fonts I can look in the font group and that's how it's labeled. Going back to the document this blinking uh, area that you see on my screen is referred to as a cursor. Wherever the cursor is, this is the location that you will enter text. So if you were to start typing right now, that's where the text would enter on your screen. If you want to type further down the screen, you have to press the enter key on your keyboard. And wherever your cursor goes at this point, that's where that text is going to place. If you make a mistake while you're typing, you can do a few things. One of the first items that you can actually take care of is to hit the backspace key on your keyboard and that'll erase one character at a time. Also, if you decided that you want it to come up to this particular area which is called the quick access toolbar, you can click on this which is referred to as undo and it'll remove the text or the last change that you made. If you decide that you want that information to come back, you can do the opposite of undo which is click on redo and it brings that text back to your screen. In this case I'm going to erase both of these and now my screen is blank. On your screen if you ever see a red squiggly line this means that Microsoft Word does not recognize it and therefore you need to make sure that you go in and find and check the spelling of the word. So in this case I'm going to right click on the word and if I mean for it to be caret I can left click on the word caret and at this point Microsoft Word thinks I've created an incomplete sentence. We'll talk about that in just a second. So in this particular case even though caret is a standalone word I'm just going to remove that and press delete. Now Microsoft Word has analyzed this sentence and it really believes that the grammar in this sentence should be changed. So if I were to go in and click and say something like this heat makes me thirsty at this point the green squiggly line should disappear because Microsoft Word recognizes it as a valid sentence. In this area Microsoft Word recognizes that I wrote a sentence however Microsoft Word thinks that I'm using the improper grammar as it relates to this word so if I were to delete this and change it to the other two, now Microsoft Word removes the blue squiggly line. Let's turn our attention to the font group on the ribbon. So we're on the Home tab, we're looking at the font group, and in this particular instance we're going to take a look at formatting different areas of some of the sentences. So if you decide that you want to bold text, what you can do is left click, drag over it, when you look at the font group, you can click on the letter B and you'll notice that that text is now bold. Microsoft Word also gives you the ability to focus on changing the font color. For instance, if I hover over this area, I can clearly see that it read font color. I want to change the color of thirsty. Another way to select one word is to double click it. And when I double clicked it, I double left clicked it. And inside of the Home tab, looking at the font group, what I've done here is I'm looking at the font color, but in order to change it to the color I desire, I have to click on the arrow to the right of the letter A. And in this instance, I might desire to change it to the color orange. Once I do that, I click in a blank area, and now I can see that the text became that color. Now, if I wanted to change the color 
and I also want it to change the size of that particular word, I can select the word, and then I can look in the Home tab, going back to the font group. This time I'm going to hover over this area, which can modify the font size. So what I would do here is click on the drop down, and I would say change it from an 11 size font, and I can actually just move my mouse and hover without clicking so that I can get an idea if the word's going to be big enough or if the word's going to be too small. And if I see that the preview given to me for the word is likable, I click it. And therefore, when I deselect by clicking in a blank area, it keeps that change. Looking, while looking at this screen, if I decide that I want to remove all of the formatting, I can go back to the Home tab, look in the Font group, and here I can take a look at this particular command for clear formatting. When I click it, it removes all the formatting to that text. If you decide that you want to change the margins in your document, you can do that again by looking at the ribbon. However, this time you're going to change from the Home tab to the Page Layout tab. So you'll click on Page Layout. This gives you the opportunity to focus on the Page Setup group, and we're going to click on the Margins command. So to change the page margins for your document, you can choose some of the presets that are already available, or you have the ability to come in here and click on Custom Margins. And when this particular dialog box pops up for Page Setup, you'll focus your attention on the Margins tab. Here you have the opportunity to change your top, bottom, left, right margins. You can also change your page layout from Portrait to Horizontally, showing Landscape. Microsoft Word does a good job of giving you a preview once you click on Change the Page Orientation. So I'm going to select it back. I want to change it back to Portrait. And then the last portion of it is you're going to click OK in order to get out of that dialog box so that you keep the changes that you did make. If you decide that you want to save your document, you can take a look at my particular title bar and notice that I haven't changed it to a name. What you would do is click on File. In this instance, you would select Save As, and you would navigate to the area where you want to save your document. I'm going to choose Desktop, and in this particular case, I'm going to look where it says File Name, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to select so that it reads How to Save My First Document. I know that I want it to be the Save As type for Microsoft Word, and then the last thing I'm going to do is click Save. To verify that my change took place, I'm going to turn my attention to the title bar, and here I can see that the title is reflected in this area. If I want a hard copy of the document, meaning that I want a physical sheet of paper that shows the information that I'm reflecting in this file, I would go back and I would click on the File tab, when this opens up, I would select Print, and if I had the opportunity to print, for example, if I had a printer that was online, I would select it here, and then I would click on Print, and then I would have a copy physically of the document that I have created inside of Microsoft Word. The last two things is to make sure that if I wanted to create a brand new fresh document, I could do that by selecting File, then I could click on New. When I look under Available Templates, I would make sure Blank Document is selected. I would look over to the right and read that Blank Document is what's present. And then the last step, I would click Create Document. I can tell this is a new document because I no longer see the title that I saved a few minutes ago. And so to close out of a document, what you would do if you're done with it is to click on the red X. And in this case, if I decided that I'm done with this document also, I would again click on the red X.